Okay, so this video is gonna be slightly more different than the typical comparison videos on this channel. I went to a Samsung store to check out the Galaxy S24 Ultra before the release date actually and I wanted to see if this phone actually can convince me to upgrade from my S22 Ultra. So if you're into the same route, then this video might be helpful quite a bit. So here is what I saw and what I felt. I picked up the S24 Ultra and noticed big differences immediately from the S22 Ultra. The phone is slightly more wider and feels more wider actually because it is actually wider and then on top of that side frame is now boxier so it does feel quite a bit wider. And the back is also flat this time. So on my hand, it kind of feels totally different. This is more of a brick than the S22 Ultra, let's say. And the same thing can be said about the front. It is also flat. And because I'm talking about the front, let's talk about the display, which is where I saw a lot of changes. But are they really visible in real life to consider an upgrade to that phone? Actually, in certain scenarios, they are. For example, the flatness of the display is something that you're going to see and feel immediately or every single time until you forget about the S22 Ultra. But is it better than the curved display? I doubt it. Because it's about preferences. If you prefer a flat display, then it is great. If you love the other one, then there is no choice. But, you know, there are a lot of problems with a curved screen. The first one has to be a screen protector. Putting on a screen protector is another thing. And then there is the blue tint issues. But the point is the S22 Ultra has a very similar style screen. It's still a boxy screen. It still has a similar kind of colors. It's not like a 2013 versus 2019 display panels differences. They're very much similar in terms of color reproduction and everything. But then where are the differences? Well, there are two big places where you will see differences. One is the bezels, which are really thin on the S24 Ultra. And that too, it is flat. So it's even more thinner now. And the side bezels don't really have the blue tint as I was talking. So it feels more modern than the S22 Ultra. Even at the top, the top bezel, the side bezels are all thin, symmetrical, and the punch hole is even smaller in comparison. So it kind of feels slightly more modern, kind of like 10 Plus versus Note 20 Ultra kind of thing. But yeah, that's the thing. But the difference that I wanted to see was the brightness. And to my surprise, even though it's 2600 nits versus 1750 nits, which I couldn't test out because I wasn't able to take this phone out of the store. But but yes, I know that there is going to be a good difference. But under manual brightness, which was something that I want to test out, it's 1500 nits on the S24 Ultra versus only 1200 nits on the S22 Ultra, same for the S23 Ultra. So the difference between them isn't actually that much. 1500 nits versus 1200 nits isn't actually that much and you're not going to feel it at all. But in the peak brightness department, if you go under direct sunlight for the certain amount of time, yes, there is going to be a difference. And also those people who don't know about the peak brightness, it is usually reserved for a few amount of pixels, not for the full display. And that too, that lasts for only a short amount of time because it makes the phone go quite warm. So, you know, it's not a big deal, but it still kind of is. Another thing that I saw, which is probably one of the biggest thing in the display, is the coating on top of the display, which makes it much less reflective compared to the S22 Ultra. I didn't get why I couldn't see the light reflection on the display of the S24 Ultra, even though it is visible on the S22 Ultra. But then I realized that, oh yeah, media is talking about the same thing. It's the coating. That is so good. The next change that I want to see was the battery. Um, okay, but the battery test isn't something that you can do in about few hours. So it takes like 7 to 15 days to do that. So yeah, I couldn't do that. But what I did though was the cameras. That's where I saw quite a lot of differences. Now, before jumping to the camera, I want to go back to the design again. The difference between titanium and the aluminum isn't as much. I mean, yes, that is a matte finish versus the glossy finish on the S22 Ultra, but I like both of them. I mean, like I can't have both of them at once, but both of them are just good. The glossy one actually feels great in the hand. The matte one actually is smudge proof. So it's actually better in day-to-day -day life if you're rocking the phone naked. So it totally depends on what you actually want. I am fine with both of them, but I like the S22 Ultra's finish. It's kind of like a jewelry to me. Anyway, I've tested out the speakers a little bit. My iPhone 15 Plus actually shooting this video has a much better speaker than the S24 Ultra. Sadly, that is the case. I don't know why Samsung is not doing something about it, but it's the clarity, the bass that is kind of missing on this phone. But it's loud and it's better than the S22 Ultra. Now, I might sound a little negative about this phone, but you know what? Certain times when you're upgrading the phone, you need to look at it from a much more critical standpoint. 
Now, I couldn't test out the performance, but what I saw was like the My S3 Ultra is not lagging at all. It is not stuttering, none of these things. And I'm using the Snapdragon variant, by the way. So the performance to me are very similar. Whether the adaptive high refresh rate or the normal day-to-day -day opening up applications, it's going to be similar. But yeah, if you do update, that's where you will see that the over time, the S24 Ultra will have much better performance than the S22 Ultra for sure. Because the CPU, GPU is much more powerful than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And if you're thinking about the updates, well, the S24 Ultra can give you up to 7 years of updates if you do care about that. If you don't, then there is no comparison in that. Anyway, so this is the main wide-angle camera photo. And the difference between these two photos is pretty obvious. This is like a normal photo, just an automatic photo. If you look at these photos, the HD performance mostly on the S22 Ultra is quite bad in comparison. The S24 Ultra looks so amazing. But then again, it's also a 200 megapixel camera versus 108 megapixel camera. Even though they both almost have the same size sensors, the aperture is slightly better on the S24 Ultra, f1.7 versus f1.8 on the S22 Ultra. But the best part is that if you zoom in a lot in the photo, then you will see the text are pretty clear on the S24 Ultra. It's kind of mushy on the S22 Ultra, which is something that is actually a big upgrade. But that's not the whole story. The biggest upgrade is actually the 5x zoom camera department, right? So before that, let's talk about the 3x zoom camera. Are there any differences? Well, the sensors are not changed, so technically there shouldn't be any differences. Well, there are. The 3x camera photos, if you look at them, it's still better looking on the S24 Ultra, but in certain cases. If you look at these decks, they are way more sharper, visible properly. But then if you look at the overall photo, it is much more darker on the S24 Ultra than the S22 Ultra. And this is the same story for almost all the photos. So I zoomed in even more on the Samsung phone showcased here. And you can see on the camera ring side, the S22 Ultra's photos are sharper than the S24 Ultra's one. I don't know why that is the case, but that's the thing. The next is the 5x zoom photos. I mean, there is no 5x camera mode on the S22 Ultra anyway, so... Nothing to compare to, but all I can say is the 5x zoom photos are native and they look good. I mean, the perspective of its own is actually cool. It's not about the zoom though, always. The next is the 10x zoom photo. But if you look at it properly, then it is a native 10 megapixel 10x camera versus a 50 megapixel 5x camera with sensor crop. Yet it is producing much more better result than the S22 Ultra's native 10x photo. Actually, I was never impressed with the S22 Ultra's 10 megapixel 10x camera, neither on the S23 Ultra. It's kind of grainy in comparison because it has a much more narrower aperture, f4.9, same as the S23 Ultra. Now, compared to that, the S24 Ultra actually have much more usable f3.4 aperture, which is not great either, but much better than the f4.9. And the same thing can be considered about the HDR. The HDR is better on the S24 Ultra. Something about it is like a soothing performance is there. I, do, I still don't know why Samsung chose the f3.4 because the 3x camera actually has f2.4. So that is much more usable in videos in the night. So because if you don't know, I shoot a lot of videos on this channel on the 3x camera of the S22 Ultra. I, I really like that one. Next are the 100x zoom photos. Are there any differences? Well, I will have to say you, both of them look ugly. The S22 Ultra is sh slightly more sharper, but... Ah, it doesn't make sense. But this photo actually shows that the S24 Ultra has made these text much more blurry and softer, while the S22 Ultra made them much, much more sharper in comparison. Even though it's over sharpened quite a bit, but it is sharper. So I don't know which one is good to you or which one is bad to you, but at the very least, Samsung is allowing you to do it. So we have to be grateful for that. Anyway, now if you look at this photo where I shot the S24, the base one, if you zoom in, you will see the same thing. It's just the HDR performance is better on the S24 Ultra. The colors are slightly more darker than the S22 Ultra. And the same way, the texts are much more sharper than the S22 Ultra's photos. Much, much more sharper. Next are the portrait photos. Samsung and their portrait modes are so good. I like every single one of them. The, these are three examples. If you look at them, the same kind of photo style. But the color tones, as I said, it's the same thing over here as well. There is a 5x mode that does the same thing, but it is the different perspective that is not available on the S22 Ultra. So that's the kind of a win situation. But yeah, this is not a real life scenario for sure, because I didn't take a human as a subject. 
But as I said, like I have tested out the S22 Ultra very deeply, so I know that if Samsung can do good on that S22 Ultra, then S24 Ultra would be theoretically be good too. You can take this whole video as a kind of a reference kind of video. It's not the most conclusive video for sure. It is kind of a reference video. You know, like you can set your own expectations when you're buying this device or upgrading to it. Now, I didn't get time to take that much videos with these two phones. Like I want to test out the manual mode and all those things, but this was not my studio, so I couldn't test out them to that depth. But I took a video, normal 4K 30 based videos, and the only thing that I saw was like the same kind of color tone and same kind of thing. It's just a color tone difference. That's it. Both the phones taking good videos. So if you're thinking that video capabilities are going to be insanely good, no. It's just the 8K 30 APS. That's it from even the 5X camera. That's a good thing. That's what you are not going to get on the S22 Ultra. You have only 8K 24 APS videos on the main camera. That's it. Oh, by the way, uh, I tested out the macro mode. The S22 Ultra was struggling real bad. The S24 Ultra did an amazing job on that. The ultra wide angle camera probably have improved a lot in the focusing department and it took a much better photo too. So yeah, I have to say that. So overall, from what I saw and what I felt in that one hour of usage, even being a phone reviewer, I still think that the S22 Ultra holds its own ground. And I also think that the upgrades are good upgrades. Like the flat display is a very good upgrade. The bezels are pretty cool upgrade. The brightness is definitely an upgrade. The performance is going to be a difference too. But in the long run, I would say, or when you put it under too much load, and definitely a big camera difference. Whether you talk about the 5X mode or 5X portrait mode, 5X 8K mode, or you talk about the main 200 megapixel camera versus 108 megapixel camera. It's a very good camera upgrade overall too. A very good one. Now, I'm not talking about the battery life, which is seemingly better according to other reviewers, or the AI capabilities, because that's also coming to most other Samsung phones anyway. So, so why I'm not convinced to upgrade? Well, the reason is very simple. If you look at the price, it starts at 1560 bucks in my market. Yeah, that's the base 256 gigabyte model. Now, back in the S22 Ultra's days, it also launched at 1500 bucks in my market. The problem is, if I did pre-order, then I could have gotten a lot of offers like 512 gigabyte upgrade and a little bit of discount here and there. So even if I order it right now, I would still have to pay 830 bucks plus to upgrade to that phone. So it's kind of like I have to spend 830 bucks at the very least to get all these upgrades. So considering that, are these big upgrades? Now, if you're thinking the unlocked variant of this phone is 1300 bucks in the US, and then if you trade in your S22 Ultra in very good condition, then it's about 650 bucks. That's the trade-in value. So in that scenario, I would say somewhat it's justifying the upgrades, but not truly. But in my market, paying 830 bucks plus for a phone like that, no. These upgrades are not that worth it. Now, does that mean that it's not a good upgrade? Yes. If your S22 Ultra performance is not good for you or the battery life is just so bad now after two years of usage and a few other things here and there, you have cracked the screen or something like that. Yeah, do upgrade the phone. Do upgrade to the S24 Ultra. It's going to be a big upgrade. But other than that, if your phone is in pristine condition, it's doing all the things that you want to do with it. I don't see why you're going to upgrade to the S24 Ultra, but you might still want to do it. Let me know about that in the comment section below. Are you upgrading from the S22 Ultra and why you are doing it? And yes, if you feel like you need some really cool wallpapers for your devices, whether it's a tablet or a smartphone or even a laptop, well, I have some crazy cool 8K wallpapers, stunning designs and amazing colors. Visit my website, joindavid.com, link down below. And until the next one, bye and take care.